by the grace of God, delightfully this year. Good evening, Ghana is 20 years old. And um, we began sometime in, I think, April, was it? Oh, we're still trying hard to find out when we began. We're looking through the tapes. We all cannot remember. I mean, what I remember, though, is that the first program of Good Evening Ghana was uh, the program in the studio. I was the host, and the, the guests were Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum, and now the late uh, Mr. Edward Salia, who was at that time a former minister, and Dr. Indum. Uh, was the new political kid on the block. I remember that very well. Dr. Indum had just been elected, I believe, as a member of parliament uh, for KEA at that time. And so we had an interesting discussion on the maiden edition. We are still trying to find out what days that occurred. But throughout this year, as we celebrate the 20th anniversary, we'll bring you um, a playback of some of the tapes of Good Evening Ghana so that you can enjoy it. We're going to show you a few teasers of three impo important programs tonight just before Moses Fuamu when he joins us in the studio. The first one is just a two and a half to three minute clip. Now this one is important because in this day, the 13th February of 2005, Ghana was at the same place where it is today. Uh, Parliament's appointments committee had, had started hearing the uh, interviews with President Kofor's appointees. And there was a particular problem with uh, three appointees. And there had been confusion at the appointment committee at the Vetin. And their names had been sent to the uh, whole parliament for voting. Uh, these persons were Dr. Richard Anani. Um, unfortunately, the former Central Regional Minister, um, the Honorable Idumazi, who passed, may he rest in peace, and Sheikh I.C. Kwe, who is happily still with us. Let's go to Good Evening Ghana, all the way 2005. Here, my introduction in the studio, introducing uh, the major speech that was given that day by the Honorable Alban Sumani Kingsford Bagbin, who at that time was the minority leader. Don't laugh too much. Uh, time works on all of us. Welcome back to Good Evening Ghana. Tonight we are talking two issues, minorities walk out of parliament and also the um, Valentine and the spiritual significance. As you would know, the president nominated 35 ministers for the consideration of parliament as per Article 78 of the Republican Constitution. Parliament has a right to view or interview the president ministers before they become ministers. The prior approval of parliament is requested by the Constitution before a person becomes a substantive minister. So the Appointments Committee of Parliament, which does the hearings, conducted its interviews and excluded three, three ministers, Dr. Richard Alani, Sheikh I.C. Kwe, and Mr. Edumaze for the Central Region. In respect of Dr. Richard Alani, he's alleged to have transferred 100000 or $90,000 to a lady with whom he had an affair, an extramarital affair that produced a baby. The lady's name is Alexandra O'Brien. And uh, she, he's, he's alleged to have transferred $90,000 to the woman. The investigation committee set out to find out whether Dr. Anani did transfer the money and whether, in fact, he had capacity to transfer that money without recourse to public funds. In the case of Sheikh I.C. Kui, he's alleged to have tendered a certificate to the appointments committee, which certificate was not real. These matters were investigated, and today the appointments committee returned to the House with the information. The information was that there was no consensus, and the House had to put it to vote. Minority insisted that the vote be a secret ballot. However, majority did not think that a secret ballot in the terms that the minority looked at it ought to be obeyed. The minority thought that if it's a secret ballot, then the procedure has to be that members of parliament will receive the ballot papers, go to the center of the chamber, vote whichever way they wanted, and drop it into the ballot box. The majority also, however, thought that the way it's been done in parliament is that MPs are given the ballot paper. They vote on their seats, and the, and, and the voting paper is collected from them. The minority thought that the case would be repeated when they were voting for the speaker, when the MPP invoked the three-line whip, where every MPP member who voted was required to show it to another MPP member to be sure that they were voting according to the party's position. Now, this created some arguments in the parliament, and the minority walked out. They will have none of that. At the end of the day, the majority voted all by themselves. 119 out of the 120 members in the parliament at the time voted in favor of Sheikh I.C. Kui. One ballot was destroyed. The same 119 voted for Dr. Richard Anani. One ballot was destroyed. And in the case of Edumazi, 116 voted for him, and three voted against him. That was the conclusion of the House, and so the three, as we stand, are deemed to be ministers of this republic, awaiting the induction of President J. A. Kufour. Let's go to the parliament and see the response of Alban Bagmi, the minority leader. Later on, he held a press conference in his office, and we'll see that also. Let's go straight and see Alban Bagmi. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sheikh Asikwe appeared before 
a similar appointments committee in 2001. And Mr. Speaker, he submitted a CV which is in the possession of this House and stated the schools he attended, institutions he attended, and the qualifications obtained. Now, the schools attended, apart from Police Training Depot Primary School, Achimato Training College, Frati School, Odogono Senri School, he also stated that he attended Institute of Bankers, London, and... Okay, welcome back. So that was... 2005. We'll show you two more tapes, and uh, the other one is also very relevant because it's an interview in Anakufado in 2010. But that was 2005, so we we'll move ahead a little bit. 2007, we held a program uh, at the Elisa Hotel uh, where we were discussing, in those days, the matters of homosexuality and gay had, had really hit uh, uh, our shores for the very first time. It was a very major issue at the time. So, as Good Evening Ghana, trying to be the lead current affairs program, um, we took out audience to the Alisa Hotel and presented a live broadcast of a poolside conversation about homosexuality. Uh, here it is. And this is Good Evening Ghana. We are coming to you live uh, from Alisa Hotel here in Accra. And we are talking about the gay rights issue. If you're just joining us, uh, that the uh, controversy was, was sparked by uh, a statement by Professor Fred Sai about gayism. And since then, uh, there's been many definitions and many activities, uh, some of it uh, from officialdom, including the Western Regional Minister calling for the arrest of all gays and lesbians in the Western region. Um, tonight, we have been told on the radio that uh, gay is also a psychological defect. Uh, we are looking at this from a legal perspective. We'll take a policy, public policy perspective. There's a psychological perspective and a cultural perspective as well. Uh, so be my guest uh, tonight. Uh, from across the table, I have uh, Mr. Kwame Kufu, who is a, a, a lawyer, distinguished member of the bar. Kwame Kufu has had successful uh, interactions with the criminal code in Ghana at the courts uh, here in Accra. Uh, Kwame, thank you very much for coming. Uh, he'll be helping us with the legal perspective and also uh, political cultural perspectives. Next to him, I have um, Dr. Lloyd Amoa. Uh, Dr. Lloyd Amoa is a public policy expert. Um, he trained in China and he's also a professor at Ashesi University. Uh, Lloyd will help us with the discussion. Thank you, Lloyd, for coming. It's Thanks. a pleasure to have you. And I have with me Baba Al Hassan, uh, whose description um, we have designated as a former uh, gay who is now reformed and who is uh, uh, helping people also to reform. Uh, Baba has graciously agreed to attend this interview, and we are very thankful to him and his sponsors, uh, the Pentecost Church, who have accepted the uh, invitation for Baba to join us and share some personal experiences with us tonight uh, so that we can have a full program. Thank you very much, Baba, for coming. Thank you. And also we have in the studio, our, we have here at the poolside, which is our studio tonight, we have our studio audience, uh, young men, and a woman uh, who will be helping us uh, with questions. They'll be asking us some of the relevant questions. Can we see them, our studio uh, people? Uh, one young lady and, um, and a few gentlemen. Say hi to the camera. Say hello, everybody. Say hi. Yes, okay, there they are. They will be assisting us tonight um, with some questions. So, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'd like to precede this discussion um, with um, this bias. Um, in in um, Genesis chapter 19, uh, verse 1, there is a quotation uh, that sort of discusses homosexuals uh, for the first time for people who are studying the Bible. And uh, Genesis is the first book of the Christian Bible, and uh, stories recorded in Genesis are those that happened for the first time that the world was formed, for those who believe that the world was formed in the manner in which the Bible describes it. It says in chapter 19 that now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Hear now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night here, and wash your feet, then you may rise early and go your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly that they turned to him and entered his house. 
Then he made them a feast, and these were angels apparently. He made them a feast and baked unleavened bread and ate with them. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out that we may know them carnally. Um, so Lot went out to them through the doorway and shut the door behind him and said, Please, my brethren, do not be so wicked. See now, I have two daughters, he says, who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. Uh, the men of Sodom were calling upon Lot to um, allow the angels uh, to be carnally known uh, by them, as the Bible says. Now, this is uh, my own scripture reading that uh, may not have a bearing on this discussion. Okay, that's another old one. Uh, that was a very interesting discussion. We do have all of these videos. We are trying to see what we should do with them for our 20th anniversary. But this is another one, a very big political interview that we had. This was in 2010, building up uh, from, from those days. So this was 10 years ago. We were speaking to Nanado Dankwa Kufado. Have a look. So this very special edition of Good Evening Ghana is the MPP Congress um, this week, and the MPP is going to elect its flag bearer for the 2012 election. The MPP has been electing flag bearers ever since 1992, and the list is J. Kufo, is uh, Professor Dubois, and it's Nana Kufado who was elected in 2007, December, to lead the party to the last election. <laughs> the MPP is going to elect his flag bearer again, and this, this evening, we are very happy to bring to you an exclusive conversation with one of the front runners um, of the election. Nana Adudankwa Kufado is thought to be the front runner of this NPP race, and uh, he has graciously allowed us into his living room to grant us this opportunity of a conversation. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, hello, it's a pleasure course. to see you again. Nice to have you here. I like your camouflage. I saw it on the campaign. You had a camouflage on. What camouflage? Yeah, is it was that? a brownish camouflage in Abosio Kanye walking <laughs> through the people. And your white canvas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be talking a lot tonight about politics and okay. about, about the MPP Congress, your expectations, okay. And, okay. and how the country has been run over the last 18 months. and. I also ask you, of course, how you felt about that defeat um, of the last election. So, viewers, um, sit back. It's going to be a good interview. I'll be back after the break. Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining <coughs> us, it's a conversation with Nanado Dankwai Kufado. He's presenting himself for the MPP's flag bearership race, which takes place on Saturday. This is a very different Congress the MPP is running. As you may already know, over 100,000 people are going to cast their ballot. And um, it promises to be quite uh, a novel situation. And we in the media are observing it closely to see how it turns out. Thank you very much again, Anado. Um, in in uh, 2008, uh, the first round, you, you led the election. Uh, you were thought to be the front runner by many international broadcast agencies. Uh, the opinion polls put you ahead, um, even by the BBC's polls. There was a question of whether you were going to win a first round or not. Uh, but you won the first round. And uh, you led the ballot by over 100,000 votes. You were overtaken by your closest competitor, Professor Mills, uh, who won the second round and was eventually sworn in as president. Must have been a very difficult time for you. And I, I want to know how you felt about it as this is the first time we're speaking after the election. Oh, clearly. I mean, in circumstances like that, one was bound to, be, to have felt very disappointed. I thought we'd done a lot of very good work. Uh, I thought we had a good record uh, as, as a government to stand on, to make our appeal to the country. But it was always uh, going to be a close election. I mean, we never had any illusions that this election was going to be a walkover and that it was going to be close. Uh, but obviously, hoping that the closeness will be in our favor. It turned out to be the other. So clearly a lot of disappointment. But really, as far as I was concerned, the disappointment was even many, many much more for the followers of our party and the, uh, the activists of our party that they had got so close to the third term agenda, which is what we're after, but at the last minute fell short. So on a personal level, yes, great disappointment. But I've, my feeling was much more for about the party and its supporters and its sympathizers, both in Ghana and across the world, who had been disappointed in what had happened. And uh, I felt more strongly about them than, than I did about myself. I've been in politics now for nearly 35 years. And I know that um, it's, it's, it's an up and down exercise. I mean, there are times you make it, there are times you don't. So personally, yes, I was disappointed, clearly. I think it would be 
it would be abnormal if one didn't feel a sense of Did you feel rejected as a candidate no, as you had been rejected by the no, people? I didn't. I didn't. The second and that's why I'm back. I didn't. Uh, I think that in an election which was in effect statistically a dead heat, you can't be talking about being rejected. <laughs> um, the showing that we made was a strong one. Even though, and I think that this is something perhaps that the discussion that has taken place both in our party and in the country since the election has not focused on particularly strongly. The third term agenda is never easy. There's no, there's, uh, yes, Tony Blair and the Labour Party did it in England, uh, but they did it from a very, very, very strong background. I mean, they won a huge majority in Blair's first term, which has been consistently whittled down since then. But as a rule, the third term agenda is not easy. We saw what happened to McCain in the Republican Party in, 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 uh, in America. But I think that what was heartening and encouraging for me is that despite the difficulties involved in, 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 in the third term victory for a ruling party was how strongly the MPP continued to show. At the end of the day, there were marked differences between what happened to us in 2008 and what happened, for instance, to the NDC in 2000. Um, the, 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 the sitting, the, the ruling government at the time, its candidate, the then sitting vice president, arrived at the elections at, uh, after eight years of President Rawlings and managed what, 44%? Okay, so throughout this year we'll be doing that and showing you where we have come from by the grace of God. We are 20 years old doing the same current affairs program. Uh, thank you for all your patronage over the last 20 years and your patronage for the next 100 years.